Hi there, winter time has arrived and it is now, what, mid-November and social media groups are full, absolutely full of people with uh, new EVs, who are new to EVs and they are going, oh my goodness, what's happened to my range, I can't go as far and it's full of people like me who've been driving EVs for years saying, don't worry, that range number isn't real. And then you've also got another group of people who's the EV haters, and they're all saying, ha, you're useless, stupid EV, it can't go anywhere in winter. So if you want to know more about all of that, stay tuned. Okay, so today I am heading up to Dundee. I have just come back from Suffolk um, and I am heading up to Dundee tonight, going out with my son to a concert. So it's a, a good, it's not that far, but it's a good little test of what is the range in this car and how does it do in the cold. Now it's not as cold as it's been this week. This week it was down at minus three, minus four. Today it's plus six, so positively tropical. But the roads are, surfaces are wet, that's not great for efficiency. And the thing is about efficiency, all cars suffer during cold weather. And the reason for that, well, there are many reasons for that. First of all, the road surface tends to be wet. That raises what's called the rolling resistance. So that increases, I guess, drag, or it's it basically, the car needs more power to get moving. And also colder air is denser. Now I'm not a scientist, so these are real kind of layman's understanding of the subject but trust me i've read enough online about all this stuff that i i basically understand the the gist of what experts are talking about so all cars are going to struggle to go as efficiently over any distance as they do in warmer drier weather the thing about evs is you notice it more because your fuel tank is smaller if i can call it that so i looked it up earlier and a litre of petrol has 8.9 kilowatt hours of energy in it. Obviously, we don't need to do that conversion on this car because it measures its energy in kilowatt hours. And this has got 77 kilowatt hours. That's the same for the ENIAC or the LROC if you get the bigger battery versions. So that means this has got basically 11 litres of petrol. So then I did, I couldn't be bothered doing the math, so I did a quick Google search and my son's car is the petrol car we have in the family. It's a one litre Skoda Fabia, so it's quite a small car, it's not a big lump like this. So it's relatively efficient, it does between 50 and 52 miles per gallon, because in the UK of course we buy fuel in litres and measure efficiency in gallons, makes perfect sense. But that means that that car on 11 litres of petrol would do, it said, between 150 and 150 miles. So the maximum range of the petrol car is 150 to 155 miles. This car, I'm going to flip the camera around in just a second, is a little better than that. That's because this car's more efficient. Electric cars are just more efficient. I can't remember offhand the exact numbers, but a petrol car is at best round about 25% efficient, so 75% of the energy that you're consuming, the petrol you're burning, is being generated or being turned into things like heat and noise, the noise that is beloved of all the petrol heads. So you're paying money to make all that heat, which of course means the cabin is nice and toasty if you want it to be that way, that's great, but it's essentially energy that you would otherwise be wasting is used to heat the cabin. And therefore, an EV, which is, again, these are off the top of my head, I think they're between 75 and 80% efficient. That means this car is always going to go further if you give it the same amount of energy as a petrol car. So my son's car will do between 150 and 155. What about the ENIAC? Well, there you can see it. The car is at 99%, so we'll call it 100, and it's predicting 301 miles. Now, I say predicted because that figure there is just a guesstimate. There are two numbers there, either side of that battery symbol. On the left, you have 99%. That is an actual empirical measurement. That battery has got 99% state of charge. The number on the right is a computer estimate. It's not a hard and fast number, it's a guess. If I thrash this car up the motorway with the heating up at 28 degrees, and I don't know, what else could I do? Have the windows open and increasing the drag, then that 
number will radically reduce. And the number over there to the right on the since start 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour, that will rapidly drop as well. Because the computer is going, wait a minute, this guy's not driving like he had before and not driving the way I thought he was going to drive. Therefore, I'm going to have to adjust my figure. Now, at the moment, I'm sitting here filming this with the climate control turned off. I'm not going to continue driving like that. It's all right. I could. If I was going to be a miser, I could turn on the electric uh, seats and the heated steering wheel. Keep warm that way. That's more efficient than heating the whole cabin. But who can be bothered with all that? So I'm going to turn the heating on. And there we go. You see it's dropped from 301 miles because the computer's going, wait a minute, he's going to want to be having that heating running. Therefore, I am going to have to um, use more energy and I'm going to, therefore, adjust my range. So that's fine. 276 miles, that's fine. I've just turned the temperature up. It was at 17, I've turned up to 20 and you can see there, it's changed again. Okay, and that's on manual. If I put the uh, HVAC system onto auto, the air conditioning is on. Okay, it's still staying the same. So that's not too bad at all. So all those people who say, turn the air con off, turn the air con on, it's not doing masses to the efficiency prediction or the range prediction. But you can see there on the right, automatically by turning the HVAC on, my efficiency's dropped from 3.1 to 2.8 and now down to 2.7. That's because we're sitting here, we're not covering any distance and we're using energy. So I'm going to turn that off again for, the sec for this moment, just so I don't totally skew the stats. So you can see why I say don't get too stressed about the range prediction. In fact, if I wanted to really maximise that range prediction, I could reset the trip, put everything back to factory settings, and the car would assume I was going to be driving to the WLTP test conditions, and that would really maximise my range. Of course, is that going to match what I get in reality? No, it's not. It's not. Because I don't drive to the test conditions. I'm not driving in nice, warm, sunny weather on a nice, smooth test track, or whatever it is that they set for that with no weight in the car. I've got bags in the back, I've got the junk that everybody carries around in the car, I've got all sorts of stuff that is not as per the WLTP test. So that number is not going to match what I do in the real world. Okay, so what I am going to do though, I'm going to set the car up, I'm not going to put it in eco mode, I'm just going to turn the heating on. I like the car around about 18 degrees, that's good enough for me. And I am then going to set off and I'm going to head for Dundee. So I'm going to take you along on the trip. I know how to get there, so I wouldn't normally use the planning. However, I'm going to put it on just to see what the predictions come up with. And because it's quite good these days, I am going to use the Skoda SatNav system. It gets a lot of abuse from people at times, but these days it's actually pretty good. So let's have a look at the route planning. And again, I stress... I don't have to do this because it's an EV. I'm doing it for YouTube purposes. I know how to get to Dundee. I know where my son's flat is. I know where we're going for the concert. I know where my hotel is and it's all going to be fine. But I'm going to use the route planner so that I can show you because it will come up with a prediction. It will predict how much uh, percentage of battery, how much energy I will have left when I get there. And when I get to Dundee, we'll compare it and we'll just have a look at how accurate the prediction is because it's not something I've ever really done much checking of before, so it'll be interesting for me as well. So, let's have a look at the screen. Navigate to Market Gate, Dundee. I've found several search results. Please select an item from the list. Item 2. Sorry. I don't know how to do that yet. Well, I'll do it by hand. OK. NCP, Market Gate, Dundee, Willison Street. Have a good journey. Please OK. Right, so there we go. Road is uh, all mapped out and it's telling me there's some roadworks. It might want me to go to this Indian restaurant that doesn't exist anymore and hasn't for the last, I don't know, 20 odd years but that's a whole other issue. I don't use the um, sat nav for that. I might want to park in a residential street around the corner. Again, who knows? The important point I'm after is up here. So I'm going to arrive at the NCP car park in Dundee, one hour 16. 
about 99%. It says it will arrive there in uh, one hour and 16 minutes on 74%. It says that it is 68 miles away. So let's have a quick look on the map. Yeah, that's the very place I want to go. So let's, in fact, why not I mark it as a favorite? Let's mark that, because I go there reasonably often to see my son. Okay, so let's head back to, how do I head back to the navigation? <laughs> there we go, go to there. All right, so remember that. Let's remember that one. It says one hour 16 and I will arrive with 74%. Let's see how we get on. Just pulled over really quickly to illustrate the point that the range number isn't right. So if you remember back in Livingston, which was, let's have a look, that was 10 miles ago. I looked at the range when I turned the heating on and it said 267 miles. So 10 miles later, that should read 257. But because I've been driving reasonably efficiently, it's actually gone up. It's 270. That is not because the amount of energy in the battery has changed. Of course it hasn't. So if you take nothing else away from this video, take away this. That number is not real. It's just a guess. And guess what? It can guess wrong. Or rather, it can improve upon its guess as it gets more information. Anyway, I'm going to get back on the road because I've got a concert to go to. Okay, I have made it to Dundee and it's got a little bit colder. It's now four degrees here, so it's dropped by two degrees. And do you remember what I was saying when we set off? It said the car had a range of 269 miles. Well, we have driven 57. So that should mean what we had uh, 212 left. Well, is that true? Let's have a look. So there you can see, I hope that's focusing, yes. So there you can see the car had 269 and it's now got 234. So does that mean that we have driven 35 miles? No, it does not. We have driven 57 miles. So as you can see, the computer updates its predictions. And as for the prediction that we would get here with 75% left. Well, again, the car's beaten that as well. It has got 81% uh, left, so that's pretty good. As you can see, I had the temperature set at 18 degrees. The car, um, I've just put it into eco mode as I've got into Dundee, but I actually didn't have it on eco mode, so I'm not sure how much difference that makes anyway. But in terms of the way I set the climate control up, I, I find the Enyaq gets either too hot or too cold. If it's on auto, I've no idea why. So I just set it to uh, clear the windscreen, heat my feet. It's, as I said, it's 18 degrees and it's at 2 degrees. I said it's going in for a uh, repair tomorrow. And the reason for that is to do with the HVAC system. So what has typically been happening recently is that the car is smart enough to know that there's nobody in the passenger seat so it should set that to eco it's typically not doing that it's mirroring uh, whatever's on over here and the only way you can get that to change is to turn the hvac system off by pressing the off button and then turn it back on but no matter whether you do that the thing that is not there is there are no controls in the rear there is just nothing happening with regards to the climate control in the back so the triple zone climate control, I think, is broken. Is it a software thing? Is it a hardware thing? I don't know. It's going in tomorrow, so maybe... I'm saying tomorrow, it's actually going in on Monday. Today's Saturday. Um, but it's going to go in on Monday morning. We're going to get that fixed, I hope. And it might be a software thing. It might be a hardware thing. I don't know. I'm sure they'll find out and they'll look at it. The car's actually due a software update to version 5. Will it do that at the same time? I don't know. We shall see. Anyway, hopefully that is a useful little, a little video showing you that in relation to winter driving, the range is not actually the range. The range you will get is what you worry about, not the range that is guessed on. It used to be called on the Nissan Leaf when those EVs first came out, it used to be called the guessometer, the guessometer. So treat it as a guess, don't treat it as fact. Don't treat it as a hard and fast number that you have to really stress about. It isn't. Worry about your efficiency. And as you can see, this car today 
heating on four and a half degrees now and the road surface has been wet and it's still managing 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Now, I've not been on the motorway for much. I was on the motorway for a little bit and then I've largely been on A roads and dual carriageways. So that speed is average at 39. Trust me, I've been doing either 60 or 70 throughout. That average number gets dried down because I've been uh, stopped at junctions, stopped at traffic lights, that sort of thing. But I have been travelling at the speed limit throughout. Anyway, I hope that's of some use and I'll see you in another video very soon. <coughs>